uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Naim. Uh, you can call call me Naim. Uh, I'm a second year medical student, and today I'm going to give you this lecture about uh, endothelium and platelets. This lecture was given to you, I think, by Dr. Abdul Jabbar. Uh, I don't think it is given to you by Dr. Abdul Jabbar. Uh, this is my name. This is my email, and this is what my WhatsApp number. Uh, any questions about the lecture, about him, about uni in general? Uh, please feel free to ask me. And yeah, let's get started. So I'm just going to talk about, first of all, the content that we're going to take. So uh, let's start with the first part of the lecture. I'm going to talk about the endothelium. It's in the name. So obviously, I'm going to talk about it. OK, uh, so we're going to discuss the, the endothelium function and structure mainly. Uh, then we're going to go into the regulation of the permeability of the endothelium and the blood vessel. Again, you took that, I'm pretty sure, and like you took permeability from very different angles and aspects, even you took it in CVP, I'm pretty sure. Here, we're going to more talk about the structure and how does the structure like uh, affect the permeability and what specific structures in the endothelium or the in the blood vessel that has to do with the permeability. And the last part, again, it's in the name, so we're going to talk about the platelets. Is that clear? I don't think anything hard to understand here, so let's just get into it. First of all, let's talk about the endothelium. What is the endothelium? Well, this is the picture that you probably saw 10 million times. You saw it in CVP, you saw it with Dr. Abjapar, and you're seeing it again. Uh, really important concept. Uh, we, we, I'm going to get into it. Let me just, first of all, give you what is the endothelium? Okay, guys, so again, uh, let me get the pointer. I'm going to get the pointer. Yeah, the laser. Brain. Okay, so this is the blood vessel, okay? This is a blood vessel. And inside the blood vessel, what you're going to have red blood cells, right? So this, the blood vessel is mainly two components. You have the plasma membrane, and inside it, you have the endothelium, which is what we're going to talk about. And now, it is basically the inner cell layer of the blood vessel. So it's in direct contact with the red blood cells, okay? So plasma membrane. Uh, then the uh, then the endothelium cell. Then you're gonna have the plasma, the white blood cells, the leukocytes, the red blood, uh, the red blood cells, the platelets, all of that inside. Is that clear? I think that's uh, very simple. Uh, what we need, what we need you actually to know about that, that it has two surfaces, two main surfaces to the endothelium. Okay, the apical surface and the basolateral surface. So for the apical surface or the apical surface, whatever way you want to say it, it's this surface. You see this one, the one that that is uh, uh, that faces the lumen, that faces the red blood cells. Okay, this is really important to know because then when we're going to go to the, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the platelet aggregation and how does the platelet bind to the to the blood to the blood vessel wall. We're, we're going to mention that. So again. And the question, there could be a very simple question about this. Uh, platelets are uh, or not, yeah, platelets are going to be inhibited by which part of the inhibit, the platelet aggregation is going to be inhibited by which surface of the endothelium? Uh, the epical. Why the epical? Because the epical is the one in touch with the platelets. Is that clear? Very simple. Uh, the basolateral surface is this one, uh, the outer one, which does not touch the blood, does not touch the blood, just to make it like more simple, and is attached to the plasma membrane. Okay, very simple concepts. Uh, I'm not sure, Saraha, if I should explain this because Dr. Abdul Jabbar said in the lecture in the recording that he's not going to ask about it. But let me just go very quickly over it since it's very simple. You have three type of endothelium, uh, endothelium cells, or three types of vessels in general. The continuous one was, as you see in here, the the endothelium is like full endothelium. There's no holes, there's no uh, pores inside it, just one cell, and there's one tight junction that connects the cell with each other. Why why would we want this kind of cell? Obviously, because we don't want any uh, what we call any leakage, because some places of the, of the uh, of the body, like the brain, you don't want anything to get there. You know, like any small molecule that could get into the brain. It could drop you dead, so you don't want that. So that's why we have a full endothelium continuous cell, so no leakage could happen. Then there's the fenestrated one, where there's uh when there's uh, when the plasma membrane is still intact, as you see here, the endothelium cell is not intact. So there's holes in the endothelium cells, but the plasma membrane is still intact. And the last one, which is the discontinuous. Like it's an artery, obviously, and the blood is there, but it's like very, very leakage. You're gonna find these in uh, the bone marrow, the liver, the spleen, where you want a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fluids and a lot of uh, molecules coming in and out. Okay, especially specifically proteins. Okay, simple till now. Did we move on? 
Should I move on to the functions? Is the structure clear? The apical and the basolateral surface. Okay, good. Let's move. So the functions of the endothelium. So for the endothelium, there is six main functions uh, mentioned in the Dr. Abdul-Jabbar lecture. I'm not sure if he expects you to know them six by say like the exact six number, but I'm going to talk about each single one of them since he talked about them. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Regulation of permeability. Again, we said it. The whole point of this continuous fenestrated uh, uh, continuous is to know what the permeability and how molecules come in and what and what molecules don't come in. The main two things that you need to know about the, the endothelium itself. Remember, we're talking about the endothelium, not the plasma membrane. We're talking about the endothelium now, the cell itself. It does two things. One, free movement of ions. So when we're talking about Na, sodium, potassium, calcium, all of these, they are free. So channels or just, they just diffuse. Okay, they come in and out. There's no, there's no blockage. Nothing is stopping them from coming in and out. So free movement of ions. The second thing you, I expect you to know about endothelium that it inhibits the protein movement. So no protein from inside the blood should get out to the interstitium or to the surrounding tissue without the endothelium allowing it, okay? So let's just start with this idea that blood, uh, not blood, sorry, that protein does not move. It's always inside the blood and does not get out, okay? Then we're gonna show you how it goes out, but till now, at the start of the lecture, let's make it clear. One, it allows free movement of ions. Two, it inhibits the movement of protein. So the proteins can stay inside the blood vessel. Is that clear? Th these are very two important concepts. Okay, great. So now we said that we need to inhibit protein from moving out, but it's okay for the ions to move out. Why is that? Why do we inhibit proteins, not inhibit ions? Well, that's answered very easily. I think you remember the concept that you took in, uh, in CVP, I think you also took it in foundation. So I'm not sure if you took it in GI. I don't think you took it in GI, but you took it in CVP 100% and you took it in foundation, which is we have two types of pressures on the arteries. We have the hydrostatic pressure and the osmotic or the oncotic pressure, okay? Again, let's review it together. The hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that tries to get the blood or the fluid to get outside of the, of the vessel. So this is a vessel, right? This is the endothelium. Hydrostatic pressure is from the inside and it tries to get the fluid outside of the vessel. Is this clear? I think you guys remembered that. So it tries to push the fluid outside of the blood vessel. That's the hydrostatic pressure. The other type of pressure is the osmotic pressure or the oncotic pressure. It's the same, osmotic, oncotic, they are the same, the exact same meaning. Which is, if you remember, it tries to get the, or not tries to get, let's say it attracts fluid to get inside the, uh, vis the, the vessel. So what happens here is hydrostatic pressure pulls, uh, pushes the fluid outside of the vessel, then the osmotic pressure gets the blood and the fluid back inside the vessel. Okay, very simple concept. Uh, you guys should know this. You guys did CVP, so you should know this. Uh, so if you remember, osmotic pressure is made by what? It's made, it's made from the proteins inside the vessels. And if you remember more, these proteins are usually, we're talking about the albumin. So the whole idea of the endothelium not allowing the protein to go out is just so we don't lose this osmotic pressure. Because imagine, we have hydrostatic pressure, okay, and the, the leakage, and I mean, there's leakage. So the, it's pushing the fluid to outside the vessel, okay? And also the proteins are going outside the pressure, uh, outside the, the, the vessel. So now... The proteins outside the vessel or uh, the outside the blood vessel is going to also attract the fluid. So you're going to have two forces attracting the fluid outside of the artery. So you won't have any more blood inside the artery. Is that clear? That's why it's very crucial to have the proteins inside the inside the vessel. That is the whole idea of that's it. The whole concept why does our endothelium uh, inhibits the protein from going out? Again. Uh, this is what I said. Lose of protein uh, would lead to edema. Do you guys know what edema is? I think you guys discussed that concept in CVP. Did you or do I need to explain it? Yeah, basically, for people who don't know, uh, edema is when the fluid uh, when the fluid is in the interstitial uh, in the interstitial uh, uh, tissue in the inter interstitial space. So if you know. There is a tissue and there's a normal tissue and between the tissue and the vessel, I mean, there's a vessel and normal tissue. Between them, there is a space called the interstitial space, okay? When the fluid is, uh, when the fluid is there, like 
there's normally fluid there, but when the fluid is excessively there, you're going to have edema. Edema is basically, like, it's going to look that your, for example, this is my finger. My finger is going to look like this. It's going to be way bigger. And when, when you touch it, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be, it's like you're touching on a balloon filled with water. That is the idea of edema. And you don't want edema to happen because it's obviously, it's not normal, you know? It's a disease. So that's the whole idea. So if you lose protein into the interstitial fluid because there's damage to the endothelium, you're going to have edema. Again, I said this, uh, Dr. Abdul Jabbar Ali, he asked us this specific question last year, if I remember if I remember correctly, this, call, this came in the exam. Very simple, just know it. What causes the oncotic pressure or the osmotic pressure? Albumin. 70% is albumin. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yes, we need the proteins to be inside the vessel. But if only proteins are inside the vessel, we would die because protein are basically what they, they do every single uh, every single thing in the body, right? So obviously we need protein to go to the periphery, to the muscles, to the interstitium for multiple reasons, to regulate inflammation as you're going to take in the inflammation lecture. I think you already took it, but again, if you did not take it or not study it yet, uh, you need proteins and regulation of inflammation. Uh, as you took a mole, proteins, they uh, transport uh, hormone and lipids around the body. So you need proteins also outside of the uh, outside of the blood vessel. And there's a specific mechanism that we're going to talk about later. Okay? Is this clear? Is this clear, guys? Okay. Again, we said this, we need a mechanism just to get protein out of, out of the cell. We're going to discuss it later in the lecture. Just stay tuned. Okay, so... Uh, this is the first function. So it's about the regulation of uh, the regulation of the permeability. Why is this not clear? Okay. So the second one, regulation of the immune response. Uh, again, that's why I'm not sure if I should have uh, like that's why I, I'm, I'm trying not to get into specific details because a lot of these concepts that Dr. Abdul Jabbar discussed are like concepts that like need a full lecture on it. So I'm just going to give you a very brief review. Uh, if if uh, another doctor discuss it in their lecture and specific details, know it from there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give you like, I'm just gonna tell you what Doctor Abdul Jabbar told you. So I don't want to go into details because like a lot of these concepts that are you're gonna take it in second year and there's gonna be like full lectures like immune response. There's like POD like there's 15 lectures about immune response. So uh, like it's very 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 like uh, complex topic. So I'm just gonna go give you the brief idea about how does it correlate to endothelium. Okay. Uh, first of all, these two factors uh, you need to know, uh, interleukin-1 and uh, TNF. Uh, these two factors, they usually come from a lot, of, a lot of places in the body. So you guys know what macrophages, what, what macrophages are, right? I think you're pretty, you, I'm pretty sure you know what macrophages are. Yeah, you know. So macrophages are like an immune cell, the uh, phagocytes, uh, uh, things that you don't want in the body. So when there is that thing that you don't want in the body, like a bacteria or a bacteria, a virus, not really a virus, but you know, uh, let's say foreign uh, foreign uh, creatures in the body, and uh, phagocytosis it, it sends interleukin one and TNF, so it it's basically releases them, and they go to the endothelial cells. Why do they go for extra? Ex oh, you guys know, nice for extravasation, good, mashallah, good. So it's basically they go to the endothelium to to do two things: one, extravasation, which is uh, why do you know extravasation? I don't remember we took it in first year. Salah. I was like, okay, good. Because you, you guys know. Good. <laughs> so basically, uh, okay, yeah, I see you did it in the inflammation lecture. So basically the, the endothelial cells, they're going to like, there's going to happen a reaction where the, the in, some of the endothelial cells, they're going to become like this. You know how we said that they are together with tight junction. So they're going to be a small space where immune cells kind of going to go through. I'm going to explain this in the next slide. Uh, so... Uh, and and t uh, other than extravasation, yeah, other than like them coming out and the, uh, the the leukocytes coming in throughout that process, we have integrins and selectins. Just know integrins and selectins from this lecture. Don't go into the specific names and the inflammation lecture or or any other lecture. They they're gonna give you the names that you need to know. Know them from there. From here, from my lecture, just know that we have integ uh, integrins and selectins which are on the endothelium and they help throughout that process, okay? So just know that these two factors, they act on the endothelium and they show, and because of them, inter, uh, integrin and selectin get exposed, okay? That's the two things that I need you to know from this slide. So uh, again, you don't need to know this. This is a slide that from POD, okay? I just got it because I like this slide. 
You don't need to know it. Just know what I'm telling you. This is the macrophage that I told you about. Okay, look, it releases cytokines. You don't even to know. You don't need to know the word cytokines if it's never if it if it, if it's mentioned in the inflammation lecture. Okay, know it. If it's not, no, don't know it. We have. Oh, you really have it? Okay, that shows you how much I remember from him. <laughs> anyway, so TNF interleukin one. They're gonna go to the endothelium and they're gonna show you P selectin and E selectin. Again, uh, because of those, you're gonna have rolling of the leukocyte. So what is rolling of the leukocyte? Basically, this is the blood vessel. It comes to the blood vessel, okay, binds, and then it starts moving. So it doesn't bind in its place, no. Because of the selectins, it starts moving, okay? And now when you reach here, when you reach the integrin and the integrin ligand, when it binds to the integrin, it stays in its place, and now you have extravasation is where the uh, leukocyte get out to the inflammation site. Okay? Clear? Is that clear, guys? From this lecture, you don't need to know anything more than that. TNF. I uh, interleukin one acts on the endothelium. They show p p because of them p selectin one and p uh, I mean uh, selectin and selectin uh, p selectin e selectin get exposed, and uh, the integrin ligand binds the leukocyte. Extravasation happens. That's it. If you took more in the inflammation lecture, know them, know them from that lecture. I don't want to give you extra information. So I know you guys have, you guys have a lot to study. So yeah, that's everything you need you to know. Let's go to the third function of. The third function of what? Of the endothelium. We're talking about the endothelium, which is the growth of blood vessels. Uh, I think you took this in CVP very briefly. Uh, if not in CVP, maybe you're going to take it in him very briefly, but I'm going to explain it here, which is, guys, remember, you have blood vessels in your body, but you were not born with the same number of blood vessels. And when you are 50 years old, you still have new blood vessels coming out. So the blood vessels, it's not like it's not like your bone, Halos, they're there and they never come back again or like they never grow again. No, they're always growing. Okay, you need to know that about the blood vessels. And we said it, blood vessels are made of what? Endothelium. So that's the point. So this process is also called angiogenesis. Uh, you need to word uh, you need to know this word, angiogenesis. Really important to know. Uh Saraha, no one says growth of new blood vessels, everyone says angiogenesis. So you need to know it's going to be in the questions it's going to be in the board exams it's going to be like everywhere just know it okay uh first of all what happens here okay so you have a tissue that got injured okay let's say my shoulder uh there's enough there's no enough blood coming to my shoulder so it becomes hypoxic again you need to know the word hypoxic Do you know what hypoxia is guys you probably know it from cvp hypoxia is when a tissue does not get enough oxygen because it's not getting enough blood or or not or enough oxygen in general. Usually, it's because there's no blood supply. So what happens to that tissue that got injured, or because of the lack of oxygen, it's gonna release a factor called VEGF, uh, vascular endothelium growth factor. So it's a growth factor. What does a growth factor do? It pre it basically uh, makes the thing grow. And here we're talking about vascular endothelium. So Vascular endothelium cells are going to grow because of that factor, okay? That is released from what? The injured cells, the injured tissue, because it has no oxygen, okay? So let's talk about angiogenesis, the process. Now, uh, again, uh, these, uh, uh, forget about the tumor. I'm going to talk about it later. This is the, uh, the tissue that I'm told you about, the tissue that got injured, okay? And it produces VGF, VEGF, okay? Vascular uh, endothelium growth factor. So what happens here is, first of all, in response to low oxygen, hypoxia injury, whatever you want to call it, you have from that tissue, the growth factor is getting produced, okay? Uh, it goes toward what? It goes toward the endothelium. Why? Because it's an endothelium growth factor, okay? Common sense. Uh, it triggers the first thing it does to the endothelium is flips its polarity or changes its polarity. Basically, uh, it does something to do, like it had, know the word polarity, okay? It changes it, okay? So it basically, if the polarity was A, it becomes A minus. That, that's the whole point. So what is the polarity here? Remember the first slide that I gave you when I told you the endothelium has an ethical and a basolateral surface? Remember that slide? Please tell me you remember it. <laughs> you remember that slide, guys? When I told you the endothelium, epical surface and basolateral surface? Right. So the epical surface, we said that it's, it's uh, toward the blood. So as you see here, uh, toward the blood, this is the epical surface, okay? The basolateral surface facing the lumen, okay, good. And then the one that's not facing the lumen, good job. And the basolateral is the one that is not facing the lumen, which is this one. What happens here when uh, VGEF 
goes to it and acts on the endothelium, it flips its polarity. So what happens here? So this is the endothelium, okay? Uh, VGF goes here. VEGF goes here. Now, for from this side, it comes so the vessel needs to go to that side, right? To the, to the hypoxic tissue. So the blood vessels, what's going to happen to them? The epical side, which should be toward the blood vessel, now is going to become toward the interstitium, right? Because here, we don't remember, here you don't have blood. Here you have a blood. Here, no blood. In that side, you have no blood. It's like just interstitial tissue and like tissue in general. And the epical surface shouldn't be toward that. But because we want now a new, a new vessel to grow and we want a new lumen to happen, so the polarity is going to flip. So it's going to become here. So it's going to start facing what? The interstitium at first. Again, from the, the other side, the same. It's going to become facing what? The interstitium. So the surface is switched aside. <sighs> like it's, it's, it does not flip, flip. The, like this, this is the epical, right? And this is the loop. We want to do an opening here. So this is the epical and this is the It becomes like this. This. So we have a vessel now here. Okay. Toward down. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it envisionates. Exactly. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat it from uh, the start again. I know this is this is kind of weird. I know it, it takes some time, but basically it's like this and becomes like this. So we have a new vessel going down. You, you, you understand? So when this happened at first, there is no blood here. It's still interstitium. That's why the epical surface would face what the interstitium, which it shouldn't normally. But because of the growth factor, now it can. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna repeat it. Uh, this is okay. Let, let's say this. Okay. This is the epical surface, right? This one is the epical surface, and this one is the basolateral surface. Cool? Cool. This one is facing lumen. This one is facing what? The interstitium. Now, and the, the, the growth factor comes because of the damaged tissue. It comes here, and it flips its polarity. What does that mean? Now, it means that the epical surface is fine with facing the interstitium. It doesn't need to be always facing the lumen. So what happens? It comes like this because now it's normal for it uh, to face the interstitium. Remember, here we have interstitium. We don't have a blood vessel yet. We're still in the process of making a blood vessel. So here it's still a blood, it's still what? It's still an interstitium. Now, here's the lumen, but here's still an interstitium. Uh, it's still like a tissue, a normal tissue. Okay, let's say a normal tissue, not a blood, not blood. But, and what is the surface of this? This is what? The epical surface. Why does it face an interstitium now, not the lumen? Because of the growth factor. Is that clear? Or do you want me to repeat again? It is in the pic. Yeah, it is. It is in the picture. But sometimes, sometimes these pictures like are just not very clear to, to some people. But the idea of how polarity flips, it's okay, right? Like you understand it. Basically, again, in simple words, the epical surface does not need to face the lumen anymore. That's the whole idea. Now it's okay with it facing the uh, the the dentist dentistician that is the whole idea okay okay so this is step number one after or step number two technically because step number one is the release of the factor this is number two okay what about step number three the junctional complexes broke down so we flip the polarity right now it can face but still it didn't face the interstitial but it can face it now we break the junctions remember we said we there's tight junctions between the endotheliums now they break and they go like this and the tip invades the new tissue. As you see here, it's invading the new tissue, going to the uh, tissue to form a blood vessel. So the polarity change, the tight junction broke, they face the new tissue, and they go to the side where we have hypoxia, okay? Because it's going to go to the place where the growth factor came from, because it, not, it needs to supply that place. Okay? Clear, guys? Uh, do you want me to repeat? Last lecture, I gave Lax last time i gave like i repeated so many times so a lot of people uh i don't want to say got mad but like okay i'm gonna repeat i'm gonna repeat it from all over uh, like it went for two hours and i'm not sure if you guys are okay with that or not but okay Salah, all of you understanding is way more important than the time so yeah again guys tissue got injured it released the growth factor growth factor goes toward what to all the blood vessels toward the endothelium of the blood vessels first thing it's gonna act on the surfaces so now it's going to flip the polarity. So what's going to happen here is the epical surface now is fine with facing the interstitial. But I still did not face it, but it's fine with facing it. Normally, it shouldn't face it. But now it's okay with facing it. What happens now, 
because again, because of the same growth factor, the growth, the growth factor is doing all of that. The tight junction between the two and the three is going to break. Okay. When it's going to break because of the growth factor, again, the growth factor is going to attract both of the, yeah, it's going to attract both of the endothelial cells that broke to go down like this and go toward the tissue. So the flip of the polarity, the junction breaks, and then they go toward the tissue. Clear? Yeah. Okay. One thing that Dr. Abdijabal mentioned, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to ask you about it. Well, like, just know it, uh, is that the growth factor usually goes to one specific site. It doesn't go to the whole vessel because basically imagine the blood vessel, imagine growth factor goes here, 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 and you have openings all over the place at the same time. The blood vessel is just going to like get destroyed because it's all getting opened at the same time from different sites. So it, like the blood, the blood, the blood vessel would lose its integrity. So just know that growth factor usually go to a specific site, you know, one or two cells. That's, that's something Dr. Abijabar mentioned. Sarah, like, I don't know how he's going to ask you about this, but you never know. They could always ask. So just know this. Okay. Okay. This is about the normal hypoxic injury. So problem with vessels. I mean, problems with oxygen. The second thing is we're going to talk about tumor cells. So what is a tumor? Do you guys know what is a tumor? Do you have a, like a general, very general idea what a tumor is? Let's see. Abnormal growth of cells. Kind of true. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, that's the, the most simple a cell that a cell that go crazy. I mean, uh, my brain cells go crazy, but that doesn't mean <laughs> no, no. Just play it. It won't stop replication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no apoptosis. Uh, all, all of those are right. All of those are all of those are like very, very right. So what happens is basically you have again, you guys said it abnormal growth. So let's say this is a tissue. Again, I like use this, I like to use papers. This is a tissue, okay? In this tissue, we have 500 cells normally, okay? Now suddenly in the same place, we have 5,000 uh, 5, cells. Why? Because the, the cells decided to go crazy, as one of you guys said. Now they keep replicating and nothing is stopping that replication. And again, inside, I don't think I need to mention that, but okay, you, since you said it, inside the cells, the mechanisms where, and the pathways that lead to apoptosis are gonna get screwed or like any, uh, are not gonna be as good as normally. So apoptosis is not gonna happen as much. So they're gonna keep replicating, replicating. So now for that tissue, that it should have 500, now there's 5,000. What does that mean? I mean, you basically need more oxygen, right? You, like 5,000 definitely need more than 500. Let's say there's two, three blood vessels here. Now you need uh, 30 blood vessels in the same area. So they can supply the tumor, right? And at this stage, still the body does not realize that these tumor cells are like abnormal. So the body is still did not attack them. So what happens here is, is the tumor cells are going to also produce the same growth factor that the normal hypoxic cell is going to produce it. Because in this case, when you have 5,000 uh, cells instead of 500, by the way, these are like just imaginable numbers. I just came up with them so you guys could understand. So basically, when you have way more number of cells than the blood vessels can supply, you are hypoxic. The, the, the tissue become hypoxic. So it needs more blood vessels. So the tumor cells are going to release the same factor that the normal cells are going to produce. So you, so more blood vessels can come toward the tumors to supply the tumor. Is that clear? Is the concept of it clear? And basically, because so many cells, you need more oxygen. It produces uh, the same factor. Okay? Okay. So uh, Dr. Jabbar mentioned that. And Sarah, I find it... I always, like, listen, all about these... I don't find it interesting, but when I find it interesting, when we actually apply it into medicine, by the way, this is exactly everything I said, uh, if you want to read it. When I, what I like about medicine, in both cases, do they need they need more O2? Yeah, exactly, but two different reasons. Like one is your normal body got injured. Maybe a blood vessel got crashed. Uh, yeah, usually it's like, a, it's usually a thrombus or something like that. Your body vessel got crashed. So the tissue needs more blood. The other one, it's it's a it's a disease. It's the tumors that need more O2. But they both go with the same pathway. Okay. So again, what I was saying, yeah, I was saying. So now we know that tumor cells uses this growth factor. What does that mean? Maybe we can stop that growth factor to stop the uh, the tumor growth, right? So we have this disease 
or not disease. I mean, we have this medication, which is called uh, Avastin. Uh, basically, it's anti-GF, uh, uh, anti uh, uh, anti-vascular uh, vascular endothelium growth factor antibodies. Uh, what, what do they do? Basically, they're antibodies. If you don't guys know what antibody do, they come and like they bind to the molecule, they bind to the hormone, they bind to the protein, uh, usually a protein. They bind to a protein and stop its function, okay? So basically, remember that protein needs to go and binds to its receptor to do the function normally, like any normal hormone, any normal enzyme binds to the, not enzyme, any normal hormone enzymes do not bind to receptors. Anyway, uh, they bind to the, to the receptor uh, to do their job. Basically, what this antibody does it comes here and it binds to to to, uh, to VEGF. Now VGEF cannot go to the endothelium, so it cannot produce the endothelium growth. So the tumor dies because of hypoxia, because of lack of oxygen. Is that clear? The concept of the drug. Basically, you stop the growth of blood vessels toward the, the tumor, and now the tumor dies because of hypoxia. Of course, it's not that simple. If it was that simple, then no one would have cancer ever. But like it, it's listen, guys. The more you go, this is like a tip for the future. The more you go into medicine, the more and like more blocks. The more that you realize how much we know nothing about the body. How much like like modern medicine is not actually modern medicine, and we barely know any tre actual treatments to the big diseases. Most of the treatments that we know for cancer and for uh, the, uh, diseases to the brain and other places of the body are just to reduce the pathogenesis. Like basically, if you're gonna die in ten years, now you die in fifteen. That, that, that's the whole idea of most of treatments, by the way, regarding cancer and other uh, and other like very devastating diseases. Just know that. So it's something cool to know, I guess. But everything clear about agenesis. Uh, I mean, about angiogenesis. The whole pathway. Right? You want me to do it again? We spent some time sort of on it. But if that's normal, it looks okay. Okay. Then I, everyone's saying all clear. No questions. So this is our first checkpoint. Uh, uh, this is not me because it's happy. No. <laughs> oh, jokes, all jokes. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy with my life. Kind of. <laughs> anyway, guys, in general, till now, do you have any questions about anything that we took? Like anything I explained till now? Any questions? Or should I just move on? All clear, all clear. Okay, let me just... Okay, so let's move on, I guess. So I'm not going to give you guys a break. Let's just finish it in one go, I guess. It's better for everyone. So we talked about three. We got another three. The, we got another remote three of functions of the endothelium. Remember, till now, we're just talking about functions of the endothelium, six functions. Number four is this detects, detects any changes in the blood pressure. Okay, uh, this one is kind of tricky. Uh, basically, uh, what I need you to know, in the endothelium, there's, let's say, two type of receptors that you guys need to know. There's way more, but there's two type of receptors that you guys need to know. Stretch receptors and ACTH and A and ACH receptor. Okay. Stretch receptors are basically mechanical mechanical receptors. So basically when the blood when the blood vessel gets stretched, the endothelium detects that. Okay. And uh, when and or like when it gets crashed or when it gets stretched, like basically when there's like a, a mechanical uh, stress on the blood vessel. This receptor uh, detects that, okay? And AC and ACH. These and we have like an ACH receptor. You guys know what acetylcholine is, right? Of one hundred percent, you should know this. You went through MSK, you went through mall. Of course, you know this. It's like simple. So basically, when those two receptors get stimulated, the endothelium it releases NO. You know what NO is? Nitric oxide, the thing that has ten million functions in the body. Yes, NO. Why does it release it? To relax the muscles. Basically, so the muscles uh, of the endothelium relax. Uh, the muscles of the... Relaxes the vessel. Good job. You took in CVP. Nice. So basically, it relaxes the vessel vasodilation. Cool. Yeah, vasodilation in the place. Exactly. It's for vasodilation. Uh, that's... So that's the way that it uh, like, uh, changes uh, the blood pressure and it detects the changes in blood pressure. That's the whole idea. Vasodilation. Clear? I don't think, I mean, you guys took a whole block about this, so I don't think I need to go into details. I'm going to move. Uh, fifth function, which is the regulation of clotting. Uh, clotting, you guys, I'm pretty sure you're going to take full lectures on clotting other than this one, but we're going to go very deeply into it. So uh, let's start by like just the general ideas. 
about now remember we're talking about the endothelium we're not talking about the platelets this, this is just that made clear now we're talking about the endothelium role in regulation clotting in the regulating of clotting okay so we're talking so now the first line it says inhibit platelet aggregation remember this is where in the normal conditions so my blood vessel now alhamdulillah i'm very healthy you guys which all, all of you who are watching me now you are all very healthy your blood is going smoothly inside the body why is that why is there's no aggregation because of the endothelium it inhibits the platelet aggregation in the normal condition so no damage to the blood vessel no inflammation uh, no diseases normal condition endothelium inhibits the platelet aggregation as simple as that you just gotta memorize that the second thing is the secrete the uh view one uh will 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 brand part of the clotting cascade. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys took that. It's uh, the VWF, if you're familiar with it. Uh, it's basically uh, it's basically a protein, a glycoprotein that you're going to find on the membrane, uh, not on the collagen membrane that is under the endothelium. Uh, I'm going to talk about it later in the lecture, so I'm not going to go into details now. But till now, I want you guys to know the first one very good. So normal condition, what inhibits the platelet aggregation? Endothelium. Cool? So a question in the exam, uh, he's someone's walking normally and uh, why doesn't his platelet uh, suddenly, and not, not like that. Okay, someone, uh, let's say uh, you are a al Faisal student, uh, you're living happily and uh, we detect your platelets and your platelets are not aggregating. What is inhibiting the platelets from aggregating? Endothelium, as simple as that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about or at first, yeah, yeah, I forgot about this. Let's talk about the antithrombotic properties of the endothelium. So we said that it inhibits the uh, the thrombosis or it inhibits the aggregation. Thrombosis is basically when the platelets aggregate, okay? It's the same because a thrombus is like the aggregation. It's when a platelets aggregation, the aggregation itself is called the thrombic, uh, the thrombus or the thrombotic body. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the properties and how does the endothelium inhibits it, okay? So first of all, Antiplatelet properties, we said that. I was that, Tayyip. Uh, OLG it converts uh, thrombogenin. Uh, OLG uh, uh, covers highly thrombogenic collagen of the basement membrane. Uh, that's something that, again, we're going to discuss. Now, remember, we said the endothelium stops the platelet aggregation. And we said there is a basement membrane under it, right? That, may, that basement membrane is made of what? It's made of collagen. Collagen as a substance is very thrombogenic or like it triggers that uh, thrombogenic means that it triggers the aggregation it, it triggers the formation of a thrombus so by just covering it you're inhibiting the platelet aggregation and you're inhibiting uh, you are inhibiting the thrombogenic uh the thrombogenic uh, process is that clear so basically you have a platelet and you have a collagen you have the basement membrane these two together should make all the uh, aggregation now because there is a endothelium cell in between them they don't bind to each other, so there is no aggregation. That's how the first idea how it does it. Okay. Again, listen. An injured endothelium, so in the normal conditions, as I said, does not bind platelets because it prevents it from binding to the collagen layer under or underneath it. Remember, we said endothelium, uh, uh, endothelium, and then outside it, there's a collagen basement membrane. This collagen basement membrane, when it's exposed, it binds to the platelets and it leads to the aggregation. Now, since the endothelium cells is there, it's going to inhibit the aggregation, so no aggregation is going to happen. That's clear? Okay. Now, prostacyclin and NO uh, from uninjured endothelium inhibit the platelet aggregation. Remember what I just told you less than five minutes ago, that how NO has 10 million functions in the body? Again, look, a new function. Other than vasodilation, it has to do with inhibiting platelet uh, binding. Uh, prostacyclin, PGI2, uh, Saraha, I cannot explain anything about those. You just need to know the names. Uh, PGI2 and NO, these two specifically, they inhibit, uh, uh, they, they are like basically, again, we said the uh, endothelium, they express NO, right? They express them for two reasons. One, inhibiting the platelet aggregation. Two, or the platelet binding. Two, for vasodilation, okay? So multiple functions for the same molecule. And prostacyclin also has other, like it has a lot of functions, but the one that you guys need to know is that inhibits aggregation, okay? So these two molecules, please know them. Prostacyclin keeps the blood cycling. Uh, I mean, uh, I 
<laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I mean, that's a good one. Huh? Okay, you guys got a mnemonic. <laughs> that's actually pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> so again, prostacycline uh, it keeps the blood cycling, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you guys now should memorize it. I mean, it's very easy to memorize now. You can't get it wrong. Uh, so yeah, these two, just know them. Uh, AD pays. ADP is counter the platelet aggregation uh, effects on ADP. Uh, okay, so guys, do you know what ADP is? ADP, not ATP. Adenosine diphosphate? Yeah, it is basically the diphosphate. Did you guys take it a mall or should I? If you don't, because I, I'm going to explain it very easily. Yeah, it's just two phosphate instead of three. Exactly. So you have ATP, okay? Yeah. You have ATP. Basically, this is the energy molecule of the body. It's where the energy is stored. Try, so it's three phosphate, so three phosphate bonds. The energy is, is in those three bonds. When you break one bond, it becomes ADP. I just said diphosphate, so you have two energy bonds, so it's lesser in energy, okay? Uh, ADP has a role to do in aggregation. I think you're going to take it in a different lecture. You're definitely going to take it in a different lecture. And uh, basically what breaks AD, uh, ADP, it's ADPase. Remember how ATP is broken down by ATPase? ADP is broken down by ADPase, okay? So endothelium, it has ADPase, and again, that's another way where it counters the aggregation and the thrombotic uh, and the thrombosis uh, formation, okay? So it basically does it in way, like multiple pays. First of all, it covers the collagen, it covers like the, the basement membrane collagen and inhibits aggregation. Second one, it's by the release of NO and prostacycline. And the third one, by having an ADPase, okay? Which breaks down ADP, which has to do with the thrombus. Okay. Uh, what, what part do you want me to repeat about it? Like, do you know what ADP is or do you want me to repeat the ADPase? You know what? Let, let, me, let me repeat all of it, okay? Let me repeat all of it. Uh, let me get an areas, okay? So, uh, there is ATP, okay? You guys should know what ATP is. It's basically adenosine three phosphate, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy molecule in the body, okay? You remember, how, you 100% heard of something that's called ATPase. Like you remember, uh, there is a, a sodium potassium ATPase pump. You heard about that 100%. It basically, ATPase breaks ATP into, uh, into ADP, okay? Which is diphosphate. I don't send diphosphate. ATP is triphosphate, so three phosphates. This one is diphosphate, so it's two phosphate. Okay. ADP has a role to do with the aggregation. So if you have ADP, platelets are binding together and they're aggregating. If you don't have ADP, platelets are not binding together and aggregating, right? We said that endothelium wants to inhibit this aggregation. So it needs to break ADP. So what's it gonna have? It's gonna have an ADPase to break ADP. I know there's a lot of ADP and PP and all of those, but is it clear now? Basically, ADP is a molecule that leads to aggregation. ADPase is what breaks this molecule. Endothelium wants to stop the aggregation, so it has an ADPase to break the ADP. So no aggregation would happen. Clear? Do you want me guys to repeat anything regarding this slide? Just know that it covers the collagen basement membrane. Know these two. You need to know these two. You're going to get asked about them 100%. Like, a heme exam with those two questions, without these questions, with those, these, those two questions are not a heme exam. So you need to know those. And just know the ADPase part. It's very simple. Okay, now I think we reached the sixth and the final function of endothelium. I know this part of the lecture is taking some time, but... Uh, hang on guys inshallah it's gonna i mean what matters at the end you guys understanding everything so the last one which is enzymes that modify plasma proteins the doctor Abdul Jabbar again did not go into a lot of details in this one so i'm not going to go into a lot of details he just mentioned one enzyme so basically endothelium we said that uh we said multiple things that we said uh, one it produces no process cyclins and a lot of other molecules to prevent uh, aggregation now other than the aggregation molecule that inhibit aggregation and antithrombotic uh, molecules it also has some enzymes that modify plasma protein uh, plasma proteins uh did you guys take angiotensin or i think you guys take this one renal i'm not sure if you i think you took it in cvp and pomo did you take it 
maybe it was briefly mentioned. Yeah, we took it a bit. I think. Yeah, but but yeah, I know it's like it, it has more to do with the kidney, صراحة. So I'm not surprised that you guys. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not surprised that you guys uh, we kind of skipped over. It. Yeah, yeah. Basically, angiotensin is like an enzyme. It was the array. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You you're gonna take it in. صراحة, uh, like just know this one thing about it. Don't go into details because like there's full lectures on it in in Rina, you know, and it's very simple. It's not like it's something big. But don't please don't waste your time. Basically, you have angiotensin one, angiotensin two. Okay, angiotensin one uh, is something that is produced in the kidney. Okay, uh, it's a vasoconstrictor in the kidney. Then it took lime in kidney, so it goes out of the kidney and it goes to the blood vessels. Angiotensin one, we need, again we said there's angiotensin one and angiotensin two. So we need to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, right? Because angiotensin 2 have different functions on different part of the body than angiotensin 1. So endothelium cells produce an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. From its name, it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. That's it. Please don't know anything more than that from this lecture. If it's meant, again, anything, guys, I tell you, do not know more. I'm talking about my lecture. If it's mentioned in other lectures, then you guys definitely need to know it. But in this lecture, this is what the doctor said. You don't need to know more. So if it comes in an SAQ, an enzyme that is produced, like mention one enzyme that is produced by an endothelium cell, by the endothelium cells. Okay? Say angiotensin converting enzyme, it converts, and he asks about the function, it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. That's it. Okay? Or he tells you, a clinical scenario, uh, angiotensin, uh, someone who with high level of angiotensin one, and uh, he cannot, and apparently on upon examination, he cannot convert angiotensin one to angiotensin two. What cell is affected? Uh, endothelium. Why? Because endothelium produces the angiotensin converting enzyme. Clear? Simple? So I don't think he's going to ask you about this, but you never know. So man, you never know, man. In, in this university, you never know what they ask about. So they ask about a lot of things. So just know it. Just know it. Clear? Okay, the second checkpoint. Again, a happy happy blood vessel, unlike me. So uh <laughs> any questions, guys, about the whole endothelium. We we're done with endothelium, by the way. No more endothelium talk talking. We're gonna talk about now the next stuff. Uh, next, uh, like next two parts in the lecture. Remember we said you have three parts. All good. Should I move on? Do you guys want like a 30 second break or like a minute break? Or should I just keep going? One minute. Okay, sure. One minute. Go, go. Like, you want to drink water? You want to look at your snap? If you guys have one minute, I'm gonna mute myself. Drink my drink for like one minute, and then we're gonna start again. Okay? You don't need to stop the recording. It's like just one minute. Thank you. Thank you. My mom got me coffee. <laughs> uh, guys, be good to your moms, people. Moms are, are a bless. Uh, okay. Should we go on or is it done with the one minute? Okay. Let's, let's give you another 30 seconds. Okay, everyone, is my voice clear again? Should we go on? Yellow? Everyone's ready? Jenna, you ready? Because you're the one who asked for it. Okay. Okay, let's talk. Uh, so, second part of the lecture, we're going to talk about the regulation of uh, permeability of the endothelium. Uh, basically, guys, uh, we're going to talk more about uh, permeability. Again, I told you that I mentioned it briefly, and now we're going to go into more details. 
uh, we're going to go more into the structures. We're not really going to go into the enzymes and the proteins and whatever. I think you have a different lecture on it. If you don't have a different lecture on it, then uh, don't study it. Simple, but you definitely have it. Uh, obviously, you have. So you, you better know them. <laughs> but in this lecture, we're just going to talk about the structural part, okay? So we have four main structures uh, in the blood vessel that has to do... No, So remember now, guys, we're not talking about the endothelium itself now. We're talking about the whole blood vessel that has to do with the... Uh, that has to do with the uh, regulation of the uh, permeability, okay? First of all, the structure of the endothelium, okay? Obviously, it has to do things with it. Second of all, the basement membrane. Remember when we mentioned the basement membrane before? Now we're going to mention it more. And we're going to go into specific details regarding it. Third is going to be the glycocalyx. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember glycocalyx. You took it in foundation. Uh, it's basically, again, we're going to go into it. It's like a layer on the, it's like a, a, pro, a glycoprotein layer and on the vessel. We're going to go into it, inshallah. So if you don't know what is it, don't worry. And fourth and last, which is the intracellular, uh, the intracellular junctions. Again, we mentioned that, if you remember, in the angiogen in the angiogenesis, third, third step, the ones that break, these are the intracellular junctions, the one between the endothelial cells. So let's just start with it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the uh, continuous endothelium uh, diffusion, or basically the endothelium structure. So this one is about the endothelium structure. Let's read. Uh, and the, basically, uh, I don't think we need to need. Remember, I, I told you there's three three types: the one the one that is continuous, the one that is fenestrated, and the one that is broken. Basically, uh, basically the idea here is, you know, we're talking, you know, it's it's closed, so there is no permeability to the big ions, to, to the proteins and things like that. Again, listen, these are uh, more most restrictive uh, regarding the diffusion of the molecules and proteins. Uh, note that, the th uh, okay, I'll forget about this. Uh, no, the, what they're saying here is, again, uh, there's tight junction that seals the endothelium and doesn't allow protein to go in and out. We went into that. I don't think we need to go into that more. So I'm just going to move on, okay? Clear? I think it's uh, it's very clear. So uh, yeah, like it has no extra content, even if you read it alone. Uh, like the what were they trying to say here again? There's this gap which is the tight junction. Usually, any transform like any transporting happens here. This is the only thing that you need to know. But we're gonna talk about tight junctions anyway, so there's no need to mention it here. Okay, uh, just gonna know, gonna show you the structure. Uh, so again, this is a picture that was definitely shown in doctors Annie lecture. Uh, do, guys, did Doctor Annie give you a lecture? Because for us, it was Doctor Annie. No, who, who gave, did the, did you get any histo lectures or like, I'm not sure. Annie did not give it, Dr. Annie. Oh, you guys get Dr. Khalid. Oh, Dr. Khalid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you, he showed you this picture, right? Like it's ABCs of him. Or something close to this picture. Anyway, even if you don't remember, let, let's just talk about it, okay? So, uh, so this is the, I don't recall. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Let's just talk about it. So this is the, basically the endothelium cells, okay? And this is the lumen. So here you have blood, like inside this one, you have what you have blood vessels. This is the epical. Remember when we talked about the epical? This is the epical surface, okay? This is the lumen, and this is what, this is the, this is the lumen that has the blood, the blood vessels, the, uh, not the blood vessels, I mean the blood cells, the white, uh, the platelets, the leukocytes, the macrophages. I mean, the macrophages that are inside the blood, they are here. Uh, so basically, this is the lumen and this is the endothelial nucleus. Uh, for us, Tara, this came in the OSPI, our year, it came in the OSPI. So they might ask you, what is this structure? It's an endothelial cell. What is this? It's the nucleus. What is this? It's the lumen. What is this? The apical surface, the basolateral surface. Okay, clear? Very simple, like very simple image. Guys, Tara, you need to know these ones. Uh, I know a lot of people at first year, uh, they face problems with OSPs. So, uh, if, like, when, when you're going through lectures, know the images, you know? Like, study them like you study the, con the normal content. Because, like, OSP, is, and in my opinion at least, is, like, free 20% or free 15%. You just need to study it. They, like, it's, it's super, like, it cannot be hard, you know? It can be hard, but, like, like it cannot be very confusing like an MCQ. That, that that's that's what I meant, at least. Okay, so let's move on next. Uh, so the second structure that we said, which is the basement membrane. Okay, now endothelium cells. 
out, outside of it is the basement membrane. So the basement membrane is negatively charged barrier the, on, on the basal lateral on the on the basal surface of the endothelial cells. Okay, so why is that important? Why do you think this is important? Okay, first of all, this this let me ask you a question. Proteins are proteins in general and on the normal pH level, are proteins positive or negatively charged? Negative. Okay. Ne positive. Okay. Okay. No problem. Even if uh, even if you don't know, it, it's it's negative. Okay. Proteins are in general they are negative. Uh, okay. So why is that very important? Why is the basal membrane uh, negative? So you guys know, you guys had like, you, I think all of us played with magnets when we were young. So when you go with two negatives together, it doesn't come, right? You cannot like bind two negative ends together, right? It's always the positive and the negative together, right? So basically the basement membrane has uh, oligos oligosaccharides chains and preterglycan know these things, uh, these two, they are negatively charged. And at a physiological level, albumin, which is the protein, is also negatively charged. So let's say this is the protein and this is the basement membrane, okay? Repel and the opposite. Okay, exactly. Like repel and the opposite attract. Exactly. So what happens here is this is albumin and this is the basement membrane. This is negative and this is negative at normal pH level. Okay, let's now say that the hydrostatic pressure is, high, is higher than any other kind of pressure. So the albumin want to get out. Okay, so the they're going to come close, come close, come close. When they reach the plasma membrane layer, they're going to repel because both of them are negative. So it's going to be very, very hard for these proteins to, to go out. Remember, guys, how much we were talking. You see, guys, how much how much important proteins are to be inside the vessel. You're always going to know this. Proteins need to be inside the vessel because if they go out, it's a huge problem. So basically, the whole idea is that it's negative and it doesn't allow proteins to go out. Okay. That's the, the one thing you need to know. This is something that Dr. Abdul-Jabbar mentioned. Uh, again, just know them. Uh, like in the kidney, uh, if you, you guys know what the kidney in general function is, it's basically it filters the blood, okay? So that your blood goes throughout your kidney in general. Like this is very, very basic. Like this is high school level. Blood goes throughout the kidney. The things that we don't want get out in, in the urine. The things that we want stays in the uh, in the blood, right? And now the blood that is filtered, it goes again from the kidney all the way to the heart. Okay, so it can be reoxygenated and pumped again. So what happens here in the kidney, because all the blood in our body always goes to the kidney, like three, four times a day. I don't actually remember how many times, but a lot of times to the, uh, to the kidney. So there's a lot of filtration in the kidney. And, it's, uh, and that means if there's damage there, you're going to lose a lot of proteins. And you don't want to lose proteins in your urine. Remember, urine is things that you don't want in your body, and you always want proteins in your body. So in the capillaries in the kidney, you have a very thick basement membrane, basically to prevent the protein loss into urine, right? Because it's going to be more thick, so more negative, so it's going to repel more. Simple. Is that clear, guys? Is the idea of the basement membrane clear? Okay, good, great. Uh, again, this is a picture, same same as all one. These ones come in the OSPI. I think this one too came on the OSPI title. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure both of them or one of them came on the OSPI. So like these ones are like must know. If you don't know these, it's a huge problem. Let's look at it together. Okay, remember this is the lumen. We said again, this is the lumen. There's red blood cells. There's uh, platelets. All of that. This is our red blood cells, by the way. This is not a nucleus. This is not a cell. This is this is an endothelia. This is the endothelium. So this is not a cell. This is a red. I mean, this is not a nucleus. This is the red blood cell. Okay, <laughs> is that clear? This is a red blood cell inside the lumen. This is you see this where my cursor at. This is the endothelial cell. See this? This is the endothelial cells. This not 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 this not number one. No, the the other one. This one is endothelial cells. Number one is the basement membrane. Okay, so in this slide. When we said that in the kidney, the, the, coll the collagen or the collagen layer or the basement membrane is very thick. Exactly. It is this slide. This is basically a capillary from the kidney. You see how thick it is, the basement membrane? It's like almost thicker than the endothelial cells itself. Like in some areas, it's way thicker than the endothelium cell. Or here because you have like the nucleus and whatever, so it's not thicker. But normally, look here. Throughout the cell, the basement membrane is thick. Is I mean, throughout the vessel, uh, the the basement membrane is more thick or thicker than uh, 
uh, than the endothelium. Is that clear? Simple? So you know the structures, endothelium cells, basement membrane, RBC, great, lumen. Everything else you don't need to know. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna study and renal. Okay. Third, so we talked about till now we talked about the endothelium and we talked about the basement membrane. Now the third thing that regulates the uh, the permeability, the uh, glycocalyx. So okay, now I need you guys to answer me. Do you remember glycocalyx from foundation or no? Because it was mentioned very briefly. Remember there was a question about it in the final, and I felt like a nerd when I answered it. Oh, you don't remember it, right? It's like very briefly, and we got a question on it in foundation, and I answered it, and I was very proud about myself. Yeah, just 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 boosting my my ego, you know. Anyway, so basically, a glycocalyx. Let me, let me go to the next slide. Uh, okay, you see these? These the, these like mesh like work, they like hair work. Glycoproteins with lipid. Uh, I'm not sure about the lipids. Is it lipids? I know. I know it's a glycoprotein. Sarah. I know. I know that it's a glycoproteins. I don't know about the lipids one. I know it's. It's not. It's. I know it's like uh, protoglycans, glycoprotein gags. I'm not sure about the lipids part. I don't think. No. I don't think it has lipids in it. I don't think it has lipids. I'm not sure. I. I might need to check. I might need to check. Sarah. If if it has lipid lipids in it, but I don't think it has. I'll, I'll check after the lecture and I'll let you guys know. I'm not sure if it has lipids. But anyway, what, what's written in the lecture that they are glycoproteins and uh, and gags, basically, they do the same job. Uh, okay, don't look at this slide. Look at this one. They, you look here. I look at the interstitium. The interstitium is very thin because this is the blood vessel, this is the lumen, and this is the interstitium. Okay, and this is the tissue. Now we're looking at the interstitium. Look how thin is it, okay? Why is that? Glycocalyx, it basically exactly like the uh, like its function is very similar to the to the membrane uh, to the basement membrane. It's very negative because because again it contains glycoprotein it's or protoglycans they are the same and uh, and gags not the same. There's difference in the structure but like same idea and gags. Basically, these two are very negative too. So the glycocalyx in general is negative because it's negative. Is going to repel with the proteins. Same concept. So proteins are going to stay inside what? Inside the cell. So here, this is, is not normal. As you see, here, you don't have glycocalyx here. What they did here is they did an experiment. They bound, like they basically injected someone with antibodies, uh, antibodies to the glycocalyx. So these antibodies. So same, yeah, exactly, same role, same, even the same mechanism. Basically negative and start, it repels with the proteins. So proteins don't go out. Same, same function as the same. Yeah, same function. Uh, so here, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I was talking about antibodies. So antibodies here, the they they did an experiment. This is not on like this is after an experiment, where they injected someone with antibodies. Okay, and these antibodies they buy they go to the glycocalyx and buy to the glycocalyx and destroy them. So as you see here, the glycocalyx layer is not here. Okay, so what happened? Look at the interstitium layer. Look how thick the interstitium. Look here, it's very very thin. Here it's very thick. Why is that? It's edema. This is basically this is what edema looks like on like on 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 a microscopic level. You see, there's a lot of fluid in the interstitium so, uh, because there's no glycocalyx to rebel the protein. Basically, what's happening here is exactly protein left and protein now is here. So protein because of the osmotic pressure, the oncotic pressure is basically pulling fluids to come to the side of the interstitium. That's why now you have fluids here and you have edema. Exactly. You get it, guys, the concept of glycocalyx. Or do you want me to explain it again, the two slides? Everyone got it? Okay, all clear. I guess no one asked any questions, so I'm going to move next. Clear, okay. So the fourth part, so we talked about three now. Glycocalyx, um, endothelium, and basement membrane. Now we're going to talk about the junctions. This one, Saraha, guys, I'm sorry to tell you that. Uh, I don't think I can help a lot in this one. You just need to memorize the names. They are very weird names. But, I mean, that's medicine, you know. You just got to memorize these ones. I'm going to obviously try to explain it the best I can, but you just got to know it. So let's talk about the first three points. First of all, it's the only site of diffusion across the continuous endothelium. Remember when I said 
actinos endothelium where you find it in the brain so you don't want any leakage in the brain or any like any areas in the body where you don't want leakage basically the only site where endothelium cells bind together is the uh, is the junction and this junction I says it is like the area where diffusion happened because remember it's continuous so it doesn't allow diffusion for proteins this area is the area where diffusion happens that's the whole idea of this line uh, toy junctions and adhesion junctions between endothelial cells reject paracellular diffusion of molecules the same paracellular is basically between the cells so again no lose of protein no lose of protein and huge molecules that you don't want to lose same same as the first one okay uh, most of the theory of cells there allow passage of ions we said that uh, okay now they're talking about the brain remember when i told you the brain you don't want a lot of things going inside and outside the vessels in the brain because the brain is like very very sensitive tissue you're going to learn that in neuro like very very sensitive tissue so basically in the brain you have like very very tight junctions like even the junctions the junctions and selves inside the brain are very very tight so there is new like in the brain, it's like one of these tissues in the brain, like the body, probably the only tissues that specifically like that. It's the testes in the brain where there's no leakage at all, almost like zero leakage because any leakage could lead like to a devastating, like edema in the brain is, is something that you don't want to have. I can assure you, you don't want to have edema in the brain. Like anywhere else in the body, it's way, like way less severe than the brain. So basically what they're trying to say here that the brain expressed this specific molecule uh, called uh, cloud in uh, five. Let me show it to you. There's a picture for the picture. Yeah, uh, where's, yeah, this one, cloud in five, basically it's like, you can find it in other places in the body. Well, specifically it's like very, uh, like you find it a lot in the brain tissue in the blood vessels that go to the brain because like they are very tight and they literally allow nothing to go uh, outside and inside the vessel you know, only oxygen, like only oxygen and ions, you know? So this is what uh, the doctor have been trying like, try to say, like so making the endothelium extremely restrictive. I like the brain, exactly. When, when I'm talking about the brain, I'm talking about the brain, blood belly. Okay, sorry, I should have said that. I'm too used to neuro to, to people to know, to know these stuff. When I'm talking about the brain, I'm talking about the brain blood barrier where nothing can come in, nothing can go out. That's that's what I meant when I said the brain. And there's another barrier, by the way. When I said the testes, there's a, like a blood testes barrier. Uh, the human, like the male testicles, they have the same barrier where because they're very sensitive tissue again, and you don't want a lot of proteins coming in outside, inside and outside from them. I think you took it in front. Uh, the I think you took the brain blood barrier. Did you take the testicle brain barrier? I don't the brain barrier. I mean, the, did you take the blood uh, testicle barrier? I don't think so. The testes really? Who gave you it, Doctor Anis? Huh? briefly mentioned. You're gonna take it more. Like you're gonna take it in specific, specific details in first block next year, which is uh, in the repro embryo. Yeah, I remember your embryo doctor was different than our embryo doctor. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Our our doctor at embryo was not the same that you got. Same. You got uh, doctor, uh, what was his name? Uh, who gave you embryo? I know the name. Uh, Yaq Yaq oh, you got doctor Yaqeen. Oh, صراحة, Dr. Yaqeen, uh, I'm not sure about your experience with him, but he's one of the best doctors you're going to ever have. Such a great doctor, especially in Euro. Great doctor. His questions, yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was great. Like, yeah, Yaqeen is one of the best. Salah, Dr. Yaqeen is one of the best doctors in the whole uni. His explanation is great. But uh, Salah, him giving you embryo was very weird. It's like very, because he's like a neurologist. So it's really, really weird. Anyway, so yeah, do you guys get these three slides? So you just know, you need to know this name, Claudin 5. If he asks you about brain blood barrier, about testicle brain barrier, uh, testicle blood barrier, just know this small, okay? Just memorize it, Salah. I cannot help with that. Uh, again, more to memorize. Uh, no, wait, back. Uh, so endothelium adherence uh, junctions are mediated by VE cadherin, making it very restrictive. Again, uh, where where is it? This this molecule, the adherent molecule, is made from uh, VE uh, cad uh, cadherin. Know the name, Salah. Like it just makes it like all of these almost have the same uh, function. They make it more restrictive, so molecules cannot go in and out. You just need to know the names. Uh, probably they're gonna ask you about these in MCQs. I don't think they're gonna ask you. Maybe, maybe Salah, maybe in SQs. I, I don't want to tell you something and you guys just uh, remember how they look and then they come an SQ and say Naim screw, screwed us. So no, just know the names, okay? <laughs> know the names. Uh, Cadherium prevents fluid loss from vessels. So maybe uh, it's just memorization. Salah, guys, I want to help you, Salah, but I, I can't. 
you know, like it's just you need to memorize those one coherence, uh, uh, coherence, all of those. You just need to know them. Injecting an antibody and the extracellular domain of coherence, which are these ones, distribute the connection between the endothelial cells, leading to edema. Okay, these ones. Okay, these ones again. They connect between other endothelial cells. So same as glycocalyx. When you inject an antibody, they go and bind to those. Okay, these when they bind to those, they break them. What did I mean if they break them? No. Proteins can come and fluid come in and out. So it's going to lead to edema. Right? Clear? I'm sorry, Salah, guys. Uh, like, I really want to help you with these ones, but you just got to know the names. You just got to know the names. Is it clear, guys? Clear. Just memorize it. Salah, Allah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't help with that. Okay. So... The whole lecture, they can throw the whole lecture. I was talking about how we don't need, we shouldn't lose proteins, and proteins need to stay inside the vessel and whatever. But again, I told you, we need some proteins to go out. So, like for inflammation, for uh, uh, regulation of transport of lipids and other molecules and enzymes, and they could you know, obviously you need proteins outside the blood vessels. They're not just gonna stay there, right? So, but they cannot go out. Like, like it's not like ions because again they screw or like they destroy the uh, the osmotic pressure, so you need to be you need to control it. So we control it through a process that we call a transocytosis. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys took transocytosis in uh, in foundation, but if you didn't, this is it. Uh, as you see here, uh, let me just explain it briefly. Okay, forget about the tie junction now and look with me. You see these black dots? These are the albumin. Basically, tamam, they basically colored them. These are the albumin. And as you see, they, there's no albumin in the tight junction because they cannot pass or not. They cannot pass throughout the tight junction or they, there's no one like full channel that allows them to go like like this. They, like they're not like ions. You're going to find um, the NA ions that are just going to come in like that. You will never find that with albumin or with proteins. What happens here is is transocytosis. Transocytosis is at first is endocytosis. I'm pretty sure you guys know what is endocytosis. This is the cell. This is a molecule. It basically engulfs the molecule and it goes inside the cell, right? Okay. And you know what exocytosis is. Exocytosis is, is when the molecule inside the cell when it gets outside. So basically this is the cell and basically it excels the molecule or the molecule exit the cell from there, okay? Transcyt through vesicles, exactly, through vesicles, uh, through vesicles, I'm sorry, one of the doctors say vesicles, so I'm used to that, through vesicles, exactly, through vesicles, so uh, uh, what, ha <laughs> what happens here is that transcytosis is, basi uh, trans is basically the two uh, mechanism combined, endocytosis and exocytosis, the same vesicle uh, it grabs uh, a lot of protein or a lot of albumin, some albumin, not a lot, but it, can, it, bra it grabs uh, albumin and it takes it all the way outside to the other side, so from the lumen, all the way outside. Obviously, that's mediated by enzymes. That's mediated by a lot of processes and a lot of pathways inside the cell. It's not just wrap and take it out because we need to control how much albumin is inside the vessel. Is this clear, guys? The concept of transcytosis. Yes. Do you want me to repeat it? Okay, let's just read it and see if there's any question later. So endothelial restrict the passage of albumin. We said that albumin is a carrier for hormones, lipids. We said that. So it requires to go to the subendothelial tissue. Subendothelial tissue basically means outside the vessel, okay? Uh, so in the image, it's showing the image, again, transcytosis, where the dot, the black dots are albumin. Uh, if endocytosis transports across the cytoplasm film and release in the uh, adluminal side. Adluminal side is basically the side of the tissue. Adluminal, so... Lumen, add lumen. Basically, the, the opposite side of the lumen. That's, that's what it means. Clear? Should I go next? Okay, it's a checkpoint anyway. So, if you guys have any questions about the four structures, the whole four structures, the, the endothelial cell, uh, the, all of those, any questions? All clear? Okay, hang on. we just have one small part drift. Not small, but like, we just like the last part, call us no more checkpoints. This is the last one, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the platelets. Uh, the name is endothelial and platelets, so we're gonna talk about those. Platelets. So this is some normal information, Sarah, again. Uh, there's not a lot to explain about these couple of lines that I'm gonna show you next. You just need to memorize them. First of all, 
where are the platelet, the platelet formation, like most of the blood cells and the bone marrow. This is the number, this is the size of it. I don't think Sarah, you need to know them. Uh, this is the side of the number. Uh, you, like these numbers, Sarah, you gotta ask the doctor. Uh, they almost never ask about them. They never asked us about them. Uh, in my opinion, ask them if you need to know them. If I was you, I wouldn't memorize it. But I'm not telling you to memorize it. It's it's you. You know, wanna do it? Do it. You don't, don't wanna do it? Don't do it. But if I was you, I wouldn't do it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, production is regulated by thrombocytin in the liver and uh, stimulate the release in the liver and the kidney. Okay, this is, I'm pretty much sure Dr. Rehan explained it in his first lecture. I'm pretty, pretty much sure he told you what thrombocytin is, but if you don't know it, basically, again, remember guys when I said the kidney filters the blood and uh, because it filters the blood, that means that it's really related to blood vessels and the number of blood cells and whatever. So basically, what happens in the kidney kidney also has like pressure receptors and not not just pressure receptors like it has a lot of kind of receptors to do with the blood so it detects when your uh, when your blood count uh, blood cells count is low so it produces thrombopoietin thrombopoietin is produced in the kidney and the liver and it goes to the bone marrow and it tells, it tells the bone marrow produce and release blood uh, red blood cells okay and platelets uh, not blood, am i saying platelets platelets oh my god i have been saying red blood cells all the time right i meant platelets Okay, because it's thrombo, it's platelets. Okay, sorry, it's not not red blood cells, platelets. Uh, my, my brain, my brain is not braining. Sorry. Okay, uh, this is information Dr. Jabbar mentioned in his lecture, so you need to know it. Basically, uh, sequestered in the spleen, thirty percent. That means in uh, thirty percent of the platelets are always found in the spleen. Uh, if you know, again, the spleen in the, is the place where we break red blood cells. You probably guys know that by now. Uh, again, in the spleen, there's going to be thirty percent uh, of the platelets. The rest of the seventy percent is going to be around the body, uh, like around the, distributed in the blood of the body. Uh, why would you need to know this? Because Dr. Jabbar can ask about it. So I, I, I don't know any clinical, uh, any clinical application to this information. But sorry, the any clinical uh, uh, application to this information. But doctor mentioned it, so you know it. Uh, again, the diameter. This thing is really, really important, which is eight to twelve days. This is like heavily important. You guys need to know that every every like the red blood cells. Uh, how how long does it live? You need to know that. Uh, you need to know if there's a nucleus or no nucleus. You need to know all of these. These things that are there, you're going to get asked about 100%. So the platelets life, and a lot of times so the question is not going to get, the question won't be about, like, they're not going to tell you the platelets, what, how, like, how long does it live? No, they never act like that. You guys know by now. Basically, they're going to tell you, you had a disease, and throughout that disease, uh, a lot of, you have, on, yeah, there was a lot of thrombosis, so a lot of uh, formation of uh, aggregation of platelets, and a lot of these platelets got then phagocytosed by uh, macrophages, and so you don't have platelets anymore in the body, or like you have very low number of platelets. How long does it take the patient to come back to normal, or like how long does it take the patient to go back to the normal state? It takes him eight to twelve days because you need to old platelets to die so the new platelets come. Okay, so you guys need to know this. And you need to know that it has no nucleus. You need to know these. This is like ABCs, okay? Uh, okay, so this is the active cytoplasm. Uh, uh, basically, these are molecules inside the platelets. Uh, so you, you guys remember what actinomycin is? You took an MSK, you took it in, uh, you took an MSK and you took it in CVP. Actinomycin are basically the, like, it's like the muscle, they are basically the muscle fibers. When they cross, you have, uh, uh, you have what we call uh, uh, when when they cross, there's a contraction. So, guys, when you get when you get like let's say you got caught, right? After a week, the caught is gonna be smaller, right? Like way smaller. Why is that? Because what happens here is that uh, because of the actinomycin inside the platelets, first of all, it's gonna help it uh, aggregates, and there's actinomycin around that place in the around the platelets. So when they aggregate and they start contraction, contracting. Basically, they're going to make the wound come closer and closer. So they're going to reduce the size of the wound for two reasons. Because it's easier now for them to heal. It's easier for the like it's easier for the for the opening or for the like uh, the bird for the opening or for the cut to be healed when it's closer or when they like, stick it together. That's why we suture. Uh, 
yeah, it helps in close up, uh, closing up the wound exactly. So that's why also we suture uh, the wounds because when the wounds are like when when the two, this is something they're gonna take in POD, so you're not gonna ask about it. Just for you to understand why we have actinomycin, when you suture the wound, you get them too close, uh, two together, right? Well, basically, what happens here when, when they are close together, it's easier. Uh, like it, they heal way easier. They heal way easier and take way less time. That's why like uh, uh, if someone gets very big cut and the cut cannot be sutured, they stay months and months and sometimes even years till that want to be healed because it cannot be sutured. That's the whole idea of suturing. Actinomycin, exactly. Just basically contract to hope to close up the wound to make it like closer, okay? I uh, have uh, enzyme uh, enzyme synthesis and storage of calcium. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, synthesis of prostaglandins for the inflammation reaction. Already know, guys, prostaglandins, they are released throughout the inflammation reactions. You took the inflammation lecture, you told me. So it's going to be more discussed there. Not going to go into details. Uh, uh, dense granules containing serotonin, ADP, ATP. Serotonin is something that I don't think you're, I don't think you're gonna get asked about unless it's mentioned in different lectures. It has to do with pain and feeling pain and vasodilation and vasoconstriction of the vessels. Uh, ADP. Remember when you said ATP has to do with the with the with the with the, uh, with the aggregating. That's why we have it here. ADP and ATP for ATP is like it's found in every cell, but ADP is uh, for the for the aggregation, uh, you have alpha granules. So basically, these things, and we're gonna discuss them now. In the next slides: uh, fibronogen, uh, fibronectin, uh, VWF, and the PDGF. We're gonna discuss all of those. And fibrillin stabilizing factor. Uh, basically, guys, remember why does platelet aggregates to form uh, a fibrin or to form a thrombus or to form uh, something to stop the blood from bleeding, right? When we does when we do that, we want the we want to do it, we want to throw the fibrin or the thrombus that was formed to be stabilized in its place and to be strong so it doesn't break. Because remember, there's always blood coming from the blood, so there's always pressure on it. Okay, fibrin stabilizing factor or F or F or FSF basically stabilize it in its place and it makes it tough, so no blood can break it. You know, so all the waves from the coming blood cannot destroy it. Is that clear of the function of it? So it could come in and sack or like an MCQ. What is the function of this? Stabilizes the thrombin or the, or the so it basically stabilizes the aggregated uh, platelets. Clear? Do you have any question about any of those six molecules? So now I'm, I'm trying to be, to go very briefly over them because I'm pretty sure you guys have full lectures on them and Dr. Rayhan specifically, uh, Aslan, I'm pretty sure he gave you some symptoms regarding all of those or like most of them. So I don't want to waste you guys time and give you something I don't want to give you extra content from my side from things I know about POD and that they're gonna like uh, make you study more things. So I'm just gonna skip. Do you need? Do you, do you know any one of uh, any like other? I'm not gonna add any extra content. Any questions about all of these? Know that they're in the bone marrow. You gotta know that they could tell you the bone marrow is danger uh, is damaged. What what would happen? The platelets count to go down. Uh, you got to know that thrombotin is important for their production. It's from the liver and the kidney. You got to know that. It's for the production and the release, stimulate the release and production. Uh, you got to know this information uh, squistered in the spleen. Dr. Abdul Jabbar emphasized on it. I, I listened to the recording and he emphasized on it. So, no, I think he, he might bring you a question from it. So, emphasize on it. Uh, the micrometer diameter, I'm not sure. I mean... I want to know, you know, it's a you thing, but you should know the lifespan and you should know the nucleus part. And these molecules just know that they exist and know their function, okay? We discussed them all. Let's go next. Okay, now this is the interesting part about the platelets. So this is a platelet, okay? This is not a red blood cell. This is a platelet. And there's two, or let's, like in books, they're divided into two things. I like to divide them into three parts. But like if, if you get a question, it's two parts, okay? But let's now for... To make the lecture more simple, let's divide it into three parts. First of all, the organelle zone, which is are these, you see these molecules inside organelle. You know what an organelle is, is inside the cell. It's basically the specific structures inside the cell. So the organelles in the platelets, you have the peripheral zone, which is the glycocalyx. Remember, we mentioned the glycocalyx regarding the, regarding the blood vessel. Now we're going to talk about it also regarding the platelet. It's found in both. You all mix things up. It's found there and it's found here. So two different places. Not the same thing, uh, and the membrane of it, obviously, and the membrane of the platelet. Again, not the not the not the basement membrane of the blood vessel. No, we're talking about the membrane of the platelet. 
two different structures, okay? Don't mix up. The last thing, which is just structural ozone, the actin and the myosin that helps with the aggregation, helps with closing the wand, helps in all of that, okay? So let's start. This way. We're going to discuss each one of them uh, specifically. Let's start with the peripheral zone. So it's basically the, uh, the peripheral zone. So it's on the outside of the platelet, right? And remember, platelets aggregate together. So they need to attach to each other and they need to attach to the blood vessel, okay? So what part of the platelet is going to be responsible to that? The outer part, obviously, because if it was the inner part, like it, could, it cannot be the inner part, right? It should be the outer part so they can bind to each other from the outside and bind to the blood vessel, okay? So first of all, first part, which is the glycocalyx, it's the fluffy surface coat or uh, the hair, or the, like it's basically the hair structure outside. This is how I remember it always, the hair structure outside of it. Okay, uh, it contains the glycoproteins, again, glyco glycoproteins, the protoglycans, GAGs, all of these. Basically, these glycoproteins, these things you need to memorize. Like, I'm pretty sure each one of those you're going to have, like, each each one of these lines, one or two questions are, is going to come from them, okay? Very important, like ABCs of the aggregation reaction, okay? So let's talk about them. One, uh, the first thing that you need to know is the GPI is found on the platelet, okay? So G, uh, GP, uh, GP1B, not GPI, GP1B is found on the platelet surface, okay? From the glycocalyx, it's found on the platelet surface. And the VWF, which is the von Wildbred factor, we talked about it in the endothelium part, it's found on the collagen, right? So it's covered by the endothelium. Remember how it's covered by the endothelium? Because it's found on the collagen, which is prothrombotic. We said that, okay? So you have this part, which is this protein, on the platelet, it binds to this protein on the collagen. Why? Because you need the platelet to be adhered to the collagen. You need the platelet to be adhered to the blood vessel. You don't need. You don't want the aggregation to. to you don't want to form a thrombus. And then the thrombus go throughout the body, right? No point of that. I think Aslan, you took it in CVP when when a thrombus goes through all, all throughout the body, it could lead to strokes and death, basically. So you want it to be literally stuck on the blood vessel. So this is the first two proteins that you need to know regarding it stucking on the blood vessel. Know if it's for the blood vessel or for the platelet aggregation. Very important. So adhesion to the blood vessel or to the collagen layer, GP1B and VB, uh, and uh, VWF. Really, really important, okay? First two molecules. I'm going to show you later in the picture, okay? Now, the second one, which is GP2B and uh, 3A, okay? These find, or where, where are these found? Also, they're found away on the platelet, okay? And fibronogen are for the platelet aggregation. Let me, let me show you a picture. Let me show you a picture because we're going to make it 10 times more. Where's the picture? Yeah, this picture. So, okay, guys. You see, this is the VWF factor. It's found on what? On the collagen part, okay? And this is the, GP, the GP1B. It's found on the platelet. So, they bind to each other for adhesion to the blood vessel wall, to the adhesion to the collagen layer, okay? Okay, so this is for adhesion. The two factors that are for the platelet aggregation for platelets to bind together are this one, which are uh, GP, uh, GP, uh, GP2B and uh, 3A, also and fibronogen. This structure is fibronogen. So fibronogen binds these two parts of the platelets together, the two GP, uh, the GP2B and 3A. They bind to fibronogen, and fibronogen binds to GP2, uh, GP2B, <laughs> 3A, Basically, they want to uh, together so the platelet can aggregate. Okay, so know that these are for aggregation of the platelets. These are for the adhesion function. Know this, like this is really important to know. Okay, is it clear, guys? Is that part clear? Yes, 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 yes. Good. So it's all clear. Okay, so receptor on ADP uh, on ADP and thrombin promoting aggregation. Again, remember when we said ADP, it's for aggregation. The same, it's aggregation. Just know that it's there. Thrombin is uh, uh, thrombin is a molecule also that uh, produced by usually by uh, produced by a lot of factors. It comes from the platelet itself. It comes from the macrophages sometimes. It comes from the endothelial cells itself. So this thrombin also is for aggregation. So it promotes aggregation. Okay. Uh, for factors one, seven, and uh, one, five, and eight, 
uh, I'm not going to talk about them because Dr. Ayhan has a full lecture on them. And uh, it's all about clotting in that lecture. And uh, he's going to tell you the specific factors that you know. Even I think Dr. Abu Jabbar said that he's not going to ask about them because Dr. Ayhan has a full lecture about them. So I'm not going to discuss them. I just put them here because Dr. Abdur Dr. Ab Dr. Dr. Uh, Jabbar, uh, Dr. Abu Jabbar put, uh, put them in this lecture. But like, there's a full lecture about them, guys. Again, I don't want to go into a detail. You know, Dr. Abdul Jabbar always like to mention everything in his lecture, even though he's even if it's mentioned in other lectures, because like he he try he tries to have like a full. He's like he, like Dr. Abdul Jabbar always like to give us the full picture. That's why he mentions a lot of things that he's not going to ask about. These this one is one of these things that it's definitely mentioned in other lectures. Doctor in doctors like Han lectures these factors and know them from there. He said it himself. Okay. Is the first part about the glycocalyx known? So know that these two factors have to do with the adhesion and these two factors have to do with the aggregation. Know these. You should know these. And also there are symptoms about them. The symptoms that you need to know about those. Uh, Dr. 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 Rayhan did, uh, talks about these symptoms, not Dr. Abjabar. Dr. Abjabar did not talk about these symptoms, okay? Okay, so this is about the glycocalyx, the first part on the periphery. The second part, which is the membrane. Uh, which basically it's get exposed on platelet activation. This membrane, okay, let's show you. Remember this membrane, how it's get exposed on platelet activation. So it can show these factors, basically the same on the membrane of the platelets. Now they're more exposed and they have all the proteins and the molecules so they can get bind. Basically, uh, so you have a layer, uh, you have a layer outside the membrane of the, of the platelet, it's called, a layer called the PF3, platelet factor three. It interacts with the plasma. It's, uh, it's for the interaction of uh, plasma uh, co coagulation factors. Again, the same. Uh, it's just like these layers that you guys, صراحة, there's not a lot to explain about those. That's the problem. You just guys gotta know them. If there are layers and factors that are on the outside surface of the platelet, and they help in co coagula coagulation. All, like all of these are problem. Most of these like have a specific function, but if they don't mention, the doctors don't mention the specific function, you don't need to study them. Just know that they're there and they're related to coagulation. For, specific, for, like, for example, for these two, the doctors gave you a specific function for them. So I mentioned it to you. But for BF3, Dr. Abdul Jabbar did not mention any specific function. He just said that it's for a coagulation, but it's a coagulation factor. So just know as a coagulation factor, okay? Now, the last one is very, very important, which is thrombopoxin A2, okay? Uh, their synthesis and their release is really important in two mechanisms, in the aggregation and in the vasoconstriction. So this is something unique. And this one you need to know. For example, now the first one is for the, uh, we said, let, let's repeat, let's repeat. So for the VWF and for uh, GP1B, these are for the platelet to the collagen. For, GP, uh, for GP2B, 3A, and fibrinogen between the platelets. Okay, for thrombogsin A2, it has to do with both vasoconstriction and aggregation. Remember when you said NO has to do with inhibiting the uh, inhibiting the aggregation and it has to do with vasodilation? Thrombogsin A2 is exactly the opposite. It has to do with aggregation and it has to do with vasoconstriction. So you always think of NO, the opposite of NO is thrombogsin A2. Okay, that's a good way to memorize it. Clear? Great. Okay, so we're done with the periphery zone. Any questions about all of these guys? Please, if you have any questions that are free, any, I don't need to tell you. You guys are familiar with the file. All good. Okay. All good. All good. So, okay, wait. What happened? Uh, wait. The chat got disappeared. Sorry, guys. Wait a sec. Okay. Back. So let's talk about now uh, the organelle zone. So in the organelle zone, again, it's like any cell. It has organelles in it. And these organelles have specific functions. So let's talk about each one of them. So it contains the three types of specific granules. You need to know this because if you could ask about it and they, they could literally ask you in it about like an, an SAQ, uh, what are the three uh, type of uh, storage granules that you have in the hay, which are dense alpha granules and lysosomes, okay? Okay, so for the alpha granules, which is this one, where let's go back to the picture. Okay, where, where's the picture? Yeah. See, these these are the dense bodies, okay? What do they contain? They contain all the aggregation factors that we talked about. So they contain, uh, they contain the VW. 
yeah, they continue the, uh, the 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 VWF. Yes, it's found on the on the collagen. But how can I say this, man? Okay, this is weird. Why it's here, Salah? You got you gotta ask the doctor for a more specific answer because this one is more specifically on the collagen. But I think it's okay to found it even here. But yeah, like this should be more on the collagen. I don't know why the doctor put it here. So I just took the line from the doctor's lecture. So you gotta ask him about this one. But I guess it's there in the alpha granules. But it's remember, BWF. It's more likely to be on the collagen. It's more. It's more than the platelet. It's the membrane. Okay. I just know that and ask the doctor why did he mention this specifically here. I think he's not talking about it. He's talking more about the things that bind to it. But please go and ask him. Okay. Just to make sure, uh, platelet derived growth factor, basically, uh, it's help again. This is per, it, when the platelet uh, binds together, they swell, okay, and they become bigger, so they can uh, form a bigger thrombus. This has to do a role in it. Basically, the platelet derived growth factor. It's a growth factor for the platelets, where so when they bind, they swell because a lot of water get in, and because of this platelet growth factor, where it attracts a lot of other platelets. And it helps in the binding process between the platelets, so you can form a clot. Okay, so basically, you now these uh, clotting factors are found in the alpha granules. Okay, so if you get asked the question, what part of the platelet contain the uh, clotting factors? You're gonna find it in the alpha granule. Okay, clear, clear. This one, where is it? The alpha granule contains all the clotting factors. This is the first part of the whole video. Oh, this is the lesson. This is the lysosome. What the heck? This one. This one. The alpha granules. Sorry, guys. This one. The alpha granules contains all the factors. Okay. Okay. I think it's clear. So let's move to the second one, which is the dense granules. Uh, they're less common. So you're going to find them less. Uh, and they contain ADP, ATP, serotonin, and calcium. Again, calcium is for what? Calcium is for the, uh, for the, for the contraction between the, the, between the between for the contraction between the actin and myosin. Remember that you remember that from MSK from hey that's why there's calcium here basically. Uh, serotonin. I don't think you need to know it. Just know that it's there. If any doctor mentioned the specific role of serotonin, they know it. But in this lecture, Doctor Amjabar did not mention it, so just skip over it. You just know yeah, it's there. And again, ADP, ATP, both of them has to do with the coagulation. Uh, it has to do again. You, we said it. ADP has to do with the uh, aggregation of the of the platelets. Okay. The last one, which is the lysosomes, uh, I think you guys know what lysosomes is. Basically, when there is, it basically what breaks everything inside the cell. So if you get something by endocytose, it goes to the lysosomes. So the lysosome has the hydrolytic enzymes that can break that thing to give you the specific uh, molecules that you need. Okay, so three types of uh, organelles that you need to know: the alpha granules containing the clotting factor, the dense granules that have ADP, ATP, serotonin, and calcium. And lysosomes, which contain the hydrolytic factors. Okay, uh, the cytoskeleton proteins, which cause the platelet activation following a vessel material damage, the ones that we talked about, actin and mycin, all those. The granules are uh, discharged and uh, can uh, into the open cuticles and. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's something I did not mention. I forgot to mention. Okay, guys, uh, let's go back to the platelet. See the platelet? Okay, so we said that we have clotting factors here, right? And uh, you have these cytoskeletons and everything. So when there's when you when there's aggregation, you want these things to be exposed, right? To to, to go out on the membrane and uh, to go out to, to the to the lumen, right? So from where do they get out? This you have this membrane system, which is the open canicular system. You see these holes. Basically, uh, when you see how it's uh, remember, see how the alpha granule is very close to it to the open canicular system. So what happens here when when there's aggregation, basically damage to the endothelium. Remember, damage to the endothelium. Endothelium produces thrombotic factors. So this thrombotic factor goes and acts on the platelet. And the alpha granules release their uh, aggregation factors and their clotting factors. They release them into the open canicular system so they can get out, out of the platelet and attract more platelets to come in and bind to each other. Okay? Clear? Here, what is the open canicular system? It's basically an opening uh, for the clotting factors to go outside of the platelet to attract more platelets to come in. Good. Okay. So this is about the organelle parts and about uh, the you know, the periphery zone. Uh, we have two more slides. I think it's actually, yeah, two more slides. Uh, guys, please focus with me on this slide because uh, 
Like, this is really important, and I'm really sad that Dr. Abdelkar put it at the end of the lecture, but I guess uh, he, did it, he did put it at the end of the lecture, so we got to know it at the end of the lecture, okay? So, yeah, let's know this one. Uh, basically, uh, remember when we said ADP, uh, thrombin, collagen, and even epinephrine? Saraha, we never mentioned epinephrine, and doctor never mentioned it, but it's written here. Uh, it's basically when you have a lot of stress, you have a lot of epinephrine. Uh, all of those, this is the platelet. Okay, this is a platelet, and this is an endothelium, right? So all of those, they go and bind to the endothelium. Uh, go go to, and go, they go and bind to the to, the, to their receptor on the endothelium. Okay, so what happens here? You have phospho, and they produce phospholipase A. Phospholipase A goes through a, a whole pathway, tamam? and what does that produce? It produces a thrombopoxane. Remember when we talked about thrombopoxane? We just said that thrombopoxane has is basically the exact opposite. Then uh, nitric oxide, it has to do with aggregation. Uh, well, exactly, the opposite of NO. It has to do with aggregation. It has to do with vasoconstriction. So now because of the binding of ADH thrombin and all these uh, uh, clotting factors to the platelet, to the receptor, uh, like we have uh, thrombopoxane. So look at thrombopoxane. Thrombopoxane is really tricky. We said that it acts on the vessel and it acts on platelets. So it acts on the platelet itself and also acts on the vessel and it also acts on other platelets. So see, so you see here, it goes outside of the platelet. It, here it shows you that it only acts on the platelet. Actually, it acts on the platelet itself by autocrine. If you remember autocrine, it acts paracrine uh, or like on a, on a uh, uh, paracrine uh, also way where it acts on other platelets beside them to produce clots, and it acts on the vessel. Now let's talk about the platelet itself. It comes here, okay, and it binds to its own receptor. So it gets out of cell and then binds to this receptor. It's kind of weird, but that's how it happens binds to the own uh, platelet receptor, and when thrombopoxane binds to the own receptor, what does it do? Well, you need to know that it reduces CMP, CAMP. Okay, you know cyclic AMP? You guys, I think you know what cyclic AMP is. If you remember from MSK, when you reduce cyclic AMP, what do you have? You have more calcium getting inside the cell and more calcium released inside the cell, right? Why do we need that calcium? As we said, the calcium is, has to do with the contraction of the platelets, so the wound would come closer, and has to do with the release also of the, remember, like, calcium has two, two roles. Remember when calcium binds to, the, like, binds to the receptor on the vesicles, so some molecules can get, can get exocytosed? That's the role of calcium, if you remember. I think you guys should remember that, right? You know that, so. Yeah, it binds basically on the vesicle, and it has, so it basically has two things. When we decrease CAMP, more calcium gets inside the cell, and more calcium are released from the inside storage of the cell. Two things. One, for the contraction of actinomycin. Two, for basically the vesicles uh, that has clotting factors to get released, okay? So when this happens, this is happens at what states when there's injury to the endothelium, when we want to do, when there's basically platelet aggregation for whatever reason there is, okay? Okay, so... That's the is that clear how aggregates can happen and how thrombopoxin plays a role? So binding phospholipase is A two, all a long pathway which leads to uh, to 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 two X A two which is a thrombopoxin to get uh, uh, to get uh, synthesized and then it binds to its receptor decreases CAMP more calcium X X X had contraction and uh, release of uh, the clotting factors clear. Okay, clear. Nice. Now let's talk about uh, uh let's talk about uh, what do they call it? Uh, let's talk about the endothelium cell and its role. Okay, now so look, remember when we said the endothelium cell has a role which it inhibits the aggregation. I hope you guys are keeping up and you remember the early information of the hey. So remember, endothelium cells it's against it against it's against the aggregation of cells. So other than just Okay, you remember the process cycling keeps it cyclic. Good. So uh, basically, what happens here? We said that it produces NO and process cycling. Here we're gonna talk about process cycling. So we have phospholipase A two. Uh, phospholipase A two again through a long pathway, it produces process cycling. Process cycling keeps it cycling. Process cycling gets out and it binds to its receptor. What does its receptor do? exactly the opposite effect of thrombopoxane because we want we want to to inhibit the aggregation so it goes and it activates adenylate cyclines which uh, guys all predict to medicosis perfect analysis got a moment i don't know who's that but uh, i mean uh, 
that that's a good mnemonic صراحة. I wish I knew it earlier صراحة. <laughs> anyway, back to the back to the to, to the thing. So prostacyclin, uh, prostacyclin goes and binds to its receptor. Again, remember, thrombocaine it reduces cyclic AMP because we want to have more calcium. This one we don't want to have more calcium. We want to reduce the calcium so we don't have any contraction and we don't have any release of clotting factors. So increases cyclic AMP, uh, prostacyclin increases cyclic AMP inside the platelet when it binds to its receptor, which decreases calcium. When calcium get decreased, so increase calcium. This goes so increase in camp, right? Increases in camp. This contraction and clotting factor from these four. Oh, you mean oh, camp? Oh, oh my god. Uh, and uh, basically, when you reduce cyclic AMP, more calcium, okay? Uh, more calcium, uh, more calcium. Uh, specifically, see the doctor really mentioned uh, the contraction, okay? And mostly, he mentioned the contraction of active myosin. So, if you get both choices in the exam and MCQ, what does this do? Uh, contraction or, uh, or the release of the vesicles, go with the contraction. But also, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the release of the molecules. It has to do with both, Saraha. But the doctor mentioned the contraction, so stay with the contraction. But it has to do with both. 100% has to do with both. Uh, but yeah, basically, more cyclic AMP, less calcium. Less cyclic AMP, more calcium. And more calcium, more contraction, and more release. Okay? So, thrombocaine, it increases the calcium by decreasing cyclic AMP. Prostaglandins increases cyclic AMP and it decreases the calcium. Clear? I know, I know sometimes it, it hurts the brain, but yeah. Is it clear, guys? Or do you want me to repeat it again? Would ATP act? Uh, not. Uh, no, no. Uh, ATP is, is not really related because they don't hear. Like no 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 it has nothing to do with that no 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 it has nothing to do with the opposite of ADP at least I don't know it has anything to do with it no 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 it's just just remember all just remember and all and the process cycling ATP is just like an energy molecule like here ATP uh, you you can see here in the slide but it's mentioned in the slide because it increases cyclic AMP guys when I'm saying increases cyclic AMP that means the increase of the activity of the adenylate cyclase you know what uh, adenylate cyclase is right the mod the protein that converts ATP to cyclic AMP that's how it increases, uh, yeah, the enzyme. So basically, prostocyclins, it increases the activity of adenine cyclase. That's why how it increases uh, cyclic AMP. Thrombocaine, it inhibits adenine cyclase. That's why you have less CAMP, okay? So the effect is not directly on CAMP. No, the effect is adenine cyclase. But because of that effect, you have less or more cyclic AMP. That's the idea. Is it clear? You want me to repeat one more time or la All clear, all clear, okay. Okay, last slide. Uh, so Raha, this is the last slide, but so we, we all discussed this. This is the picture that I just showed you. Anyway, let's read through, read through it. Injury to the vessel, we said that, or an erythrocytic block basically is going to lead to uh, expo exposure or oh, exposure exposure yeah exposure of the collagen layer the collagen layer has these things uh go and bind to the subendothelial uh, vwf uh, by its uh, gp1p again now it's adherence to the to the blood vessel and it's going to release agonist from the granules to, uh, to generate basically again these agonists from the granules that we talked about basically clotting factors to generate the thrombin. Thrombin is basically the platelets when they aggregate. It's called thrombin. Uh, now you have, because of the clotting factors, activation of more platelets. They come close. They bind to each other by fibrinogen and GP2B and 3A. Uh, and again, contractile elements pull the fibrin together. Remember, actin and filaments, they pull the fibrin together so we can close the wound. We, we discussed all of that. Nothing new here to mention. Any questions about this picture or anything that is written? Like we discussed all that, by the way. I went through all of it. I'm not like, no, it's just like we discussed all that. Clear? Okay, I'm seeing clears, so yeah, let's go on. Okay, again, know this because these are two important anticoagulation, prostacycline, 
coagulation from Pogzen. Okay, what about NO? What about NO? What about NO? NO, anticoagulants or uh, coagulation? Anti, good. 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 Anti and vasodilation. Exactly. So basically the opposite of thrombuxane. Just know it like that. By the way, but by the way, like next year in POD, you're gonna you're gonna take it like this. You gotta take that thrombuxane is and is the exact opposite of uh, NO. Like you're gonna take it in that in that matter. I don't know why doctors don't mention it in here. So this is the last slide, guys. Uh, this is a question. Bro, the answers are there before the question. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> anyway, guys, read the question and give me the answer. Do you want, should I read it to you guys? Okay, let's read it together. A patient presented to the ER with a heavy bleeding uh, upon examination. It showed that his platelets are not binding together due to a problem uh, of the protein presented on the membrane of the vessel. Uh, presented on the membrane of the vessel, the problem is in. Membrane of the vessel, that's the key factor. Okay, one, three, Okay, any the three? No. Uh, Saraha, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's my bad. No, it's it's one. It's one because it's uh, on the membrane of the vessel. I remember BWF is on the vessel, but uh, Saraha, I'm stupid for writing the question like that. I said binding together for some reason. No, no, no. It's uh, yeah, well, my bad, my bad. Okay, that's a stupid question. Okay, uh, if this get if you get a question like this, appeal it. Okay, <laughs> no, but forget that not binding together. But the problem here is because there's uh, like uh, the problem is presented at the at the because there's no protein to bind on the vessel. So the, so there's no adhesion. Okay, so the problem and and he he's getting is there's no adhesion. Remember the problem of the protein that presents on the membrane of the vessel. What protein members on the vessel? It's the D. It's the VWF. If it's the cell of the membrane, it will be clear. Yeah, look, look at this picture, guys. This picture, Saraha, is very good. I, I think it's found in Doctor Rehan slides. It's not. It's not in Doctor AG. I got it from POD, but I'm not sure if it's in Doctor Rehan. Basically, uh, this look. This is VWF. It's the only one on collagen. The other three factors, they're all found on the platelet cell. Okay. Is it clear? Do you guys get why it's one now? Yeah, it's doctor. Yeah, I remember. I, I remember Doctor Adra Rahman putting in his PowerPoint. So you all get why it's one now. You just need to memorize the factors. Wait, I did not put a thank you slide. Damn, one on the video. Anyway, uh, this is the lecture, guys. Any questions regarding anything in it? All clear? You're welcome, you're welcome. Sure thing. Okay, so uh, I think uh, you can end the... Wait, if it's the cell membrane, would it be the other one? If it's the cell membrane, then it depends on the question. Uh, if it's the cell membrane, it depends on the question. If he tells you there's a problem with adhesion, if he tells you there's a problem with adhesion, uh, it would be... If he tells you there's a problem with adhesion, it would be this one, TP1B, okay? Because this one is regarding adhesion. If it's binding together, yeah, GP1B. If it's binding together, it's 2B, 3A, okay? So it depends. The question, the problem with adhesion or binding together, okay? Well, that, yeah, yeah, the question was confusing. I'm telling you, the question is not really good. Sorry, I wrote it last minute because I did this PowerPoint like earlier today, and then I forgot that I did not write a question at the end, so I just did it like, I don't know, when the, when the coordinator, the one who's going to the, coordinating the session, t t told me that the session after two minutes, I was like, oh, I forgot to write the question, so I just wrote it very fast. If it's aggregation, it would be 3A. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. That's true, to be, to be 3A. Yeah, yeah, my bad on the question. The question is not the best the rating question ever. But the, the whole the whole stick is about is it talking about aggregation or is it talking about adhesion? Fibrogen has nothing to do. Uh, fibrogen has to do with the with the, with the, with the, 
with uh, with aggregating together. You see, it's bind with, it, it binds basically to the GP to the G GP two B and three A. Fibrinogen bind to those. So fibrinogen and GP two uh, G G two B three A. These ones are these two are for aggregation. GP one B and VWF is for the. You know, no, no, has nothing to do with the membrane. The membrane only has these two. Yeah. Yeah. Clear. You got it now, hundred percent. You want me to, to repeat it? Good, 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 good. You're welcome. Sure thing. Uh so I forgot to put a thank you slide. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh this is what really matters at the end. I hope that you all got the benefit. Uh, again, uh, let me go to the first slide. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna take some time if I wanna go. Anyway, you're gonna find the. Uh, I think my I'm gonna send my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit the questions a lot because the question is very stupid, uh, and then send it to your BLCs so you can have so you can look at it. It has almost everything Dr. Abdul Jabbar said. Uh, I try to to have everything in it. Uh, so if you want to study from it, study from it. But see, any uh, I would always I would always say it's better to study from the doctor's specific slide. This one is just to make it easier on you. Uh, again, any questions regarding this session? He, uh, if you want questions about second year for some reason, even though focus on your first year now, maybe in the future, this is my email. This is my WhatsApp number. Salah, if you contact me through my number, is uh, is second easier. <laughs> Survive first year. Like go through first year and uh, neuro is not the worst. But by the way, neuro. <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, guys, listen, I don't want to depress you. Just go for through first year. Some people like second year. I do not like it. Well, some people like, like, listen, second year, the good thing about put, no, put is not interesting. Believe me, you're not going to like it. I can assure. Like, there's only one situation you like put a POD. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can end the recording and we can talk because I don't want to, for, for people on YouTube, if you end the recording and I'm going to answer your questions.